um, a few scriptures, um, a few practical nuggets, a little history, just a few things to help us understand what we're looking for, what we're not looking for, what we're anticipating, what we're waiting for. And so if you have your Bibles, <laughs> okay, say this, I can have. Everything. Everything. My Bible says I can My have. Bible says I can have. Yes. Are you hearing that? Yes. Especially tonight, right? Yes. I can be everything this Bible says I can be. We sang tonight that you could be a history maker. And I can do. And I can do. Mm, think about that. I can do everything. This Bible says I can do. Now that goes both ways. You ought not be doing what this Bible says not to do. And we ought not be having what this Bible says not to have. Amen. So I'm just going to give you uh, a few scriptures here. And I'm going to call this... uh, Well, chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, verse 1. I'm going to call it the first phrase here. Now concerning spiritual. Now concerning spiritual. Pentecost is all about the spirit in the denominations across the world. Paul has been writing a letter here to this charismatic... Pentecostal church called Corinth. It's got quite a long letter. But everybody goes to chapter 12. They don't spend too much time in the rest of the letter. So let's pick up some of the favorite verses. Now concerning spiritual. The word gifts is in italics. I want you to notice that. Maybe even underline that. Uh, That's a problem to begin with because they think he's talking about spiritual gifts, and actually, Paul's talking about being spiritual. Now, concerning spiritual, brethren, brethren, who's he writing to? The brethren. I would not have you ignorant. Obviously, some people in this church were ignorant, they didn't understand some things, and he's bringing some understanding to them. Verse 4, he says, now there are diversities of gifts. He mentions gifts here. There's diversities of gifts, but it's the same spirit. Verse 5, there's differences of administration, but it's the same Lord. And there's diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. And then he goes and begins to list in this chapter what is known today as the gifts of the Spirit. For one is given by the Spirit. You can't come up with it by yourself. It's given to you what? By the Spirit. The word of knowledge, another word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Word of wisdom, faith, goes on. Uh, Gifts of healing to another working of miracles. Everybody say miracles. Discerning uh, prophecy, uh, discerning spirits, uh, tongues, uh, interpretation of tongues. So we see all of these gifts Paul is talking about here. All right? Then we get to verse 28 also, and he says, And God gave some to be in the church. He set them in this church, uh, some apostles, and secondarily prophets, and then teachers, and then, wow, miracles, and gifts of healing, and helps, and governments, and diversities of tongues. And then here's a statement that most people don't read. It says, are all apostles? It's a question mark. Are all prophets? Question mark. Are all teachers? Question mark. Are all workers of miracles? Question mark. Have all the gifts of healing? Does everybody have the gift of healing? Question mark. Do all speak with tongues? Question mark. Do all interpret? 
Question mark. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. He asks all these questions, and the obvious answer is no. Are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? No. But here's one for you on this Pentecostal weekend. Do all speak in tongues? The inference here is no. Do all have the gifts of healing? Well, the Bible says they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It says they'll recover doesn't say they're going to be healed. Do all have the gifts of healing? Paul is saying no. Are we looking for something that we want or are we waiting for something that God intends to give severally as he wills? I just want to be an apostle to you tonight and let you know what you can have and, and what's available to you and, and don't be disappointed if you don't get what you think you're supposed to get. That'll set some of you free. Well, I've been working on baka, 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 tiki, taka, tiki, trying to talk in tongues, and that just thing, that this thing does, doesn't work. Well, do all speak in tongues? And here's the point. No. My subtitle tonight is Four I-isms. Four I-isms. I looked it up. There are 887 isms. Uh, such as liberalism or secularism, and I don't want to name all those because I'm not talking about those tonight. I'm going to pick four. There are also 1,200 is, like atheists and extremists. There's 1,200 of those is. I didn't want to preach on the is. I wanted to preach on the isms. The first Ism that I want to talk to you about is what is called cessationalism. Cessationism. Cessationism. C-E-S-S-A-T-I-O-N-I-S-M. Cessationism. What's that mean? Ceased. The cessationalist, cessationists, First of all, none of these isms are in the Bible, which is why they're hard to pronounce. A cessationist believes that the miracle gifts of tongues and healing have ceased. We're believing tonight for the power to be witnesses. Therefore, you're going to have to understand how to witness to a cessationist. Because some people will believe that these gifts have all passed away. Now, most of them believe that while God can and still does perform miracles today, the Holy Spirit no longer uses individuals to perform miraculous signs. Now, this is a whole theological group of people. I could name the denominations that uh, are in that group. I remember sitting down with a particular pastor one day and he said that the apostles and prophets have passed away. And I turned the Bible to him and I said, read this verse. And he tried to read the verse and he couldn't even read apostle and prophet. He skipped right over to evangelist, pastor, and teacher. I says, my God, man, I didn't <laughs> just read the verse, you know. No, they've passed away. Healing has passed away. I said, well, I don't know. I'm, I've been living in divine health for some 30-some years. I'm sorry, it's too late to tell me it's passed away. But there are denomination groups, theologians, that are of this group of ism. Are you okay? All right. Now, 
Moses was enabled to perform miracles to authenticate his ministry before Pharaoh in Exodus. Signs and miracles is not a New Testament thing. How many understands that Moses performed miracles? Here's the reason. You might want to write this down. To authenticate his ministry before Pharaoh. To prove his message was true. Elijah, and that's Exodus 4. You'll find all that in there. Elijah, everybody say Elijah. Elijah was given miracles to authenticate his ministry before King Ahab. He, he raised a, a dead boy to life. Laid on him. Breathed into him. Raised a dead boy. He also called fire down on a really wet altar. What was that for? To prove his ministry, to authenticate his ministry before a king. Jesus, his ministry, was also marked by miracles, which the apostle John calls signs, John 2.11. John's point is that the miracles were proof of the authenticity of Jesus' radical message. These signs were, first thing he did, he changed water into wine. And it says that very sign was the beginning of a manifestation of his glory. No man could do that. Now, what the cessationists believe is that they, they believe all this. However, they believe that after the resurrection... Only the apostles were used in these miraculous gifts. The apostle Paul predicted that the gift of tongues would cease, 1 Corinthians 13, 8. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Because he said, I will show you a more excellent way. So this group of people, the isms here, Believe that those gifts were real for those times, but they have ceased, and now the new way is love. Are you okay? They also go on to say, well, yes, those gifts were given on the day of Pentecost, obviously, yes, but it was mostly apostles there. All right? And then they go on to say, well, yeah, those gifts are listed in 1 Corinthians, but that was at the, in the apostolic age. In Ephesians and Romans, which is written later, does not mention all of the gifts. You'll read in Ephesians and Romans that it just happens to leave out tongues and miracles out of that. Ministry gifts, serving, giving, Loving, but it leaves those gifts out. So they jump on that and say, see, they didn't even make it a few years down the road. The gift of tongues was given to an unbelieving Israel because God said to the prophet Isaiah, with stammering lips and an unknown tongue will I speak to that people. Now, people pick up and say stammering lips is where you get the baka, 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 tiki, tiki, tiki. But stammering literally means a foreigner. So the prophet Isaiah said, Israel, you're going to hear a foreigner preach the gospel to you. That happened on the day of Pentecost. When they heard in their own language, out of Gentiles, the gospel being preached to them. Amazing thing. Paul said tongues is inferior to prophecy. He said tongues does not edify the body. Prophecy edifies the body. You can talk in tongues the whole service and not any edify anybody. But if you say a few words in a language that people can understand, now you're edifying the body.
That's this ism. Everybody say that ism. Do they have some scripture to back it up? The answer is yes. You can't really totally prove that there was any tongues and healings after these scriptures right here, which would fit into the apostolic age. All right. So summary. Signs were done by the apostles. Acts 2.43. These signs were done through the apostles. Acts 5.12. By the hands of the apostles. 14 and 3. The apostle Paul and apostle Barnabas. By their hands. 15.12. Through them, apostle Paul and Barnabas. 2 Corinthians 12.12, 12, Paul is actually defending his apostleship by those signs, but he was referring back to the signs that he did perform. And then Hebrews 2.4 also is looking back to the day Christianity was established, brought forth and proven the authenticity by signs. Strong case for the power gifts or the miracle gifts to have ceased. So if you're witnessing to somebody and then you want to go ticky-tacky-ticky, thus saith the Lord, they're probably not going to go along with it right away. There might have to be a little more power than just you quoting a verse or two to them because they'll use the same verse that you quote to prove you wrong. Am I helping you out at all? Now, Jesus' ministry is unique of anybody. Now, everybody wants to quote this one. Jesus said, the works that I do, you will do also, and greater. He didn't say the miracles I do. He didn't say the gifts of healing that I do. He said the works I do. That word work means toil. Nobody wants to quote that. Okay, moving right along. Number two-ism. Everybody ready for number two-ism? This is continue. Continuationism. Do I not know how to spell that one too? C-O-N-T-I-N-U-A-T-I-O-N-S-I-M. Continuationism. Now, <laughs> May's already got an idea of what that group believes. Okay, this group believes that the gifts are still for today. And guess what? They'll qu quote all the verses that the ones that said they ceased. They'll quote the exact same gifts. Now they believe all the gifts, including healings, tongues, miracles, they're still all in operation today just as in the early church. They believe that the spiritual gifts have been continued uh, ever since that. 2 Corinthians 12, 12, and they use the very same verses to prove that, as witnessed in the apostolic era. When the Holy Spirit came, as Jesus had promised in Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power after that. They quote Acts chapter 2, the continuisms, the continuous quote Acts chapter 2. Have you ever been to a Pentecostal church that did not quote Acts chapter 2? Now, we just came through Passover. Did Jesus just die 50 days ago? I mean, don't look at me like he came back down here and died again every year. So Acts chapter 2 did happen 2,000 years ago. Does that mean it's going to happen today? Or are we keeping the feast knowing what did happen? I mean, so one group's going to quote this verse and say, absolutely the signs and wonders and miracles were there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they all began to speak in other languages that people could understand. It was a sign and a wonder to unbelieving Israel to hear the wonderful works of God spoken in their own language where they were born. But a Pentecostal church today will use that same verse 
to get somebody on the floor and say, let, it, let go, hold on, speak it out. Just say what comes to your mind. Just move your tongue. Ka -ta -ta -ba 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 -ba. That, that's it. You got it. You got it. Got what? You got the stutters. And you're using Acts chapter 2 to say that. Bishop, I'm getting a little scared on this. No, I'm just, I'm just telling you. How many has heard some people speak in tongues and you knew it wasn't any more tongues than a man in the moon? Okay. A continuous believes that all those gifts listed in Romans and Ephesians and Corinthians and all are for today. And these gifts vary from person to person as the Spirit sees fit. Even 1 Peter 4.10 says so. Peter even says so. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6, there's, there's different kinds of gifts at the same Spirit. But again, what Paul was saying, do all speak in tongues? I want to help you out right now. The answer is no, and it's okay. Are all apostles? No, and it's okay. Are you a prophet? Probably not, and it's okay. Here's the problem, trying to be something you are not. Trying to do something without a gift that you think you should have. I want to free you up a little bit. So Paul writes this whole letter to the church at Corinth. Everybody say this whole letter. I was going to go through it tonight, but I'll give you just a quick version. Chapter 1, he says, to those who are called. The letter is only to the called. So somebody that's not called, they're going to get in trouble with this letter. If I write a letter to my wife and you read it, we're all going to get in trouble. <laughs> he says to those that had called, I don't want you to come behind in any gift. Now he starts talking about there's division among you. You need to preach the cross. Jews want a sign, and he's saying don't glory in the sign, but glory in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's starting to deal with some of the issues at this Full gospel, charismatic, tongue-talking, Bible rolling under the pew church. Chapter 2, he says, don't preach with enticing words, but in the power of the Spirit. Receive not the Spirit of the world. Uh-oh, he's starting to say, apparently the Spirit of the world has crept in. He compares spiritual, little s, to spiritual, capital S. He's starting to draw a line. He talks about spiritual judgment. He talks about the mind of Christ. Chapter 3 he says, I can't even talk to you as spiritual. Because you are still carnal. You're mere men. You still think the way you used to think before you got turned around to Christ. He says, you're still at st strife. You're, you, we're supposed to be laborers together. Some sow, some water. God gives the increase. What are you acting like you're all that in a bag of chips to everybody? He said, I laid the foundation. Don't try to lay the foundation again. I've already laid it. What you need to do is build on it. Your word will be tried by fire. Chapter 4. He says, ministers must give an account. Around here we call it because accountability matters. Why? Because some began to be puffed up and think, oh, Paul, who are you? I mean, I'm an apostle too. And Paul is saying, you're no more an apostle than, you know, the salesman down the street. But they got puffed up thinking, well, I can do what you do. I remember a pastor one time wanted to travel with me. He drove for about an hour and a half and had blown the horn, flashing the lights, had to go to the bathroom. About an hour and a half later, he's blowing the horn again. I told him, you might as well go home, man. I, I drive for 10 hours before we stop. You're not a traveling preacher. Just go home and pastor. That's great. Paul says, where'd you get the revelation that you got anyway? You got it from me. I'm going to go start a church. On my revelation? 
Paul commends Timothy. He says, now there's a true son in the faith. Now, many of them wanted to avoid Paul because he's, he was going to come with a rod of correction and love. You know, like... <laughs> Chapter 5, he says, there's fornication among you. You're not even spiritual enough to judge it. Deliver him to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that his spirit may be saved. This church, talking in tongues, flopping around, jerking, shaking, prophesying, doing everything, they can't even judge somebody that's in fornication. Don't even know what to do. He says a little, little leaven leavens the whole lump. This will mess up the whole church if you let this stay on. What's he talking about? Now concerning spiritual. What are we looking for? We're not looking for a frenzy with everybody flops on the floor and we finally got the spirit. Paul's saying if you got the spirit, you'll be able to righteously judge. If you got the spirit, there's not going to be division among you. If you've got the Spirit, you know that God divides it however He wants to divide it, and there's no competition in that. He says, keep the feast without leaven. Don't have fellowship with those. Chapter 6. If you have an issue with someone, don't take them to the world court. How is the world going to judge righteously? Quit trying to join and fix an unbeliever with believers. Chapter 7, marriage problems. Do you understand Paul's saying now concerning what? The spiritual is having to deal with marriage problems. Anybody ever have a marriage problem? Oh, I needs the spirit of Almighty God for that. How many needs healing and miracles and signs and wonders right there in that? See? He's talking about believers and unbelievers in a marriage. He deals with divorce. He deals with singles. He deals with singles uh, that, that they care for the things of God. He said married people care for their spouse. And then he says, I, Paul, not the Lord. He clarifies what he's going to say. Now, this is not what the Lord's saying. But Paul said, man, I'd, I'd rather be single. He said, I'm glad I'm single. I don't have to deal with that stuff. He's just making a statement. Paul's being real. He's being spiritual. Gets to chapter 8. He says, yeah. okay, now things offered to idols. They're fighting over, they think this food that was offered to idols is holy and you can't touch it. Paul's saying, you idiot, do you think that idol touched it? Do you think it ate it? You might as well eat it. It's good food. He's going on different things like that. But then he says, don't use your liberty to cause someone else to stumble. Gets to chapter 9. He says, I am an apostle. He's pretty clear about it. He says, I have proof. Can I not eat of my labor? He talks about it. It's not a bad thing if I sow spiritual things to you that I reap financial things back from you. But, he says, I'm still going to preach the gospel free to you, whether you give me anything or not. That's a real apostle. Because if you have to be a hireling, you're not an apostle, you're a hireling. He says, but I'll still do whatever I have to do to give the gospel to free to you. Then he gets to chapter 10. He says, now I would, brethren, that you would not be ignorant. Now, don't be ignorant. I, do you see the flow? This is a letter. When we just jump to the gifts, we don't understand where Paul was coming from. He, he, he was taking a quite a long journey to get you to even understand the gifts. He said, look, all came out of Egypt. They was all baptized in the sea. They were, they were baptized under Moses, committed to the leader's doctrine. They were under the cloud. They had a move of the Spirit. They ate the manna. They had the Word of God. But with many, God was not well pleased. Okay, you're in this charismatic church, but I, there's many of you I'm not well pleased with, is what he's saying. He's making the comparison. Come on. There's, <laughs> fornication, idolatry. Idolatry. 23,000 fell in the wilderness in one day. He's saying it can happen to you. Tongue talking, Bible carrying, prophesying people. 
How many ministers have fallen for the same thing they went for back in the wilderness? Paul's just writing to the church. Now concerning spiritual. And then he, and then he says, thank God, you come to communion and you act like a pig trying to scarf down the, the, the wafers. Many are weak and sickly among you. You don't get it. People play church. Chapter 12, now concerning spiritual. Now that I've dealt with all this stupid carnality, now let's talk about spiritual things. Now let's talk about tongues and prophecy and miracles. Do you understand? Until you get past, you know, arguing and division and fighting dog-eat-dog to get to the top to be the big man, I can't trust you with the gifts. I can't trust you with the power. You're not even in a, in a condition for that. I can't give you the car keys until you deal with all this other stuff. Do you want to come to church and prophesy and flow in the things of God and you can't even get your wife to get in the car and come to church with you? Sit down and shut up. I'm sorry. Don't prophesy to anybody else if you can't prophesy to your own woman at home. If you, can't, if you can't rule your own house, there's no reason why you ought to be standing behind the holy desk trying to rule the people of God. So he says, listen, God gave some. God divides these gifts severally as He wills. You're not going to flow in gifts of healing unless God decides to give it to you. How are we doing? Chapter, you know, chapter 13, the use of the gifts, tongues, prophecy. He says, if, you, if you're done, if you do these gifts as a selfish child, it's just tinkling cymbals and sounding brass. It's just, it's just noise. It has to be done out of a heart of love for somebody else not to show off. People get in the pulpit in our church setting and then they prophesy and it's all about drawing attention to themselves. They don't care about helping anybody. Yeah. Sister Tootie, fruity, ticky, tacky, ticky, thus saith the Lord, prophesying her brains out back there. She didn't care about anybody. Just trying to draw attention to herself. Get on YouTube and put a great video on there that you got a great word from God. Now, it, Paul's dealing with all this and says this is nonsense. This is nonsense. Chapter 14, he says, follow after love and desire spiritual. Follow after love. In other words, see, love is not the replacement for the gifts. Love is the way the gifts should operate. And then he addresses tongues. Are you ready? Tongues. Everybody say tongues. He said, if you speak in an unknown tongue, and no one is there to interpret it, meaning to say no one understands that language. It helps no one. Now, an unknown tongue just simply means this. It's a tongue you don't know. It's still Biblia, Gabiyat, Yamaguimiet. Now, if you don't know Ukraine, you don't know what I said. Permita que la palabra de Dios haga vida en su vida. If you don't know Spanish, you don't know what I said. So if you walk into the church and you're talking in tongues and people there do not know that language, it says here, shut up. He said, don't, don't. Unless there's an interpreter, don't be talking in tongues. Kind of tough, huh? Now, uh, he goes on to say, now it, It'll edify yourself. I mean, I feel good about yo puedo tener todas las cosas. Que la Biblia dice yo puedo tener. It means something to me. It means something to me. But see, that's building me up. That's not helping you. He deals with that. Then he goes on and says, some of you have got familiar spirits going on. 
You're prophesying with familiar spirits. I went to a tea leaf reader one time and she read my mail, man. And then she said, I don't want to ever see you again. You got a gift from God. Please get out of here. Well, it was a real gift from God that she had too. Wrong God. But a familiar spirit knows things. So Paul's addressing this. There are false prophets. There are false apostles. No different than there are learned tongues. People in charismatic churches, I mean, come on, you've heard them. Ticky tacky ticky, shundai and a bow tie and ride of my Honda. And the only time they talk in tongues is the same thing. They learned a little phrase someplace and that's it. Free yourself. You have never spoken in tongues. That's just learned behavior. It's learned behavior. Paul's trying to deal with that. And then he says people that start doing this, he uses the, another word there in one of the unknowns and said it's baka. That's why Minister Ryan said tonight, baka, baka, baka. Bata, bata, bata. Paul's just saying, knock this stuff off. Every pagan religion, do you understand? They would have orgies and frenzies and speak in tongues. Paul's saying now concerning spiritual, you need to know the difference. Is one person slain in the spirit or the other one under the, a demonic influence? You've got to discern spirits. Discern a human spirit as well as anything else. He, then he goes on the next chapter and talks about the resurrection. He says, some of the Sadducees are sad, you see, because they don't believe in a resurrection. And he's saying, look, if there is no resurrection, what is the point of all this? I'm sorry. Paul's saying, I am expecting to get out of this mortal body. I'm saved, I'm being saved, and glory to God, I will be saved. This mortal will put on immortality. This corruption will put on incorruption. When we see him, we will be like him. I'm still shooting for that. How about you? Now, if there's no resurrection, go to the church in Texas for your best life now because that's all you're going to get. Then he goes on chapter 16. Now concerning money. Everybody say money. money. He's still talking spiritual. He's addressing all these things. What are we expecting? We need the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. It's more than baka, baka, baka. It's more than falling on the floor. It's, it's the ability to discern between right and right. It's the ability for signs, wonders, and miracles to, to prove the message. All right. That was secularism or sensualism. That's what he was dealing with. Sensualism. There is a whole lot of sensualism in the churches today. First one, cessationism. Number two, continuism. One believes the gifts have passed away. Number two group believes they're still for today. Paul is dealing with the church at Corinth and saying, you've moved into sensualism. It's just flesh. It's just carnality. Are you okay? Last one. Are you ready? Iism. Iism of the belief. <laughs> that the gifts and miracles are for today. And, and let me tell you why I believe that. For the same reason that both of them disagree on it with the same scriptures. I see them here. But I, I know how you feel. Uh, I felt the same way and let me tell you what I found, okay? I heard the audible voice of God saying to me, get at Bam." I turned around to look, and there was a wall behind me because I was in the bathroom. 
Bam started with an audible word from God. When I began preaching the kingdom of God, this is the message that I've been preaching for 37 years, is called the gospel of the kingdom of God. That in Spanish, if anyone can understand, is el reino de Dios. It's the rule and reign of God, which means God rules, which means we're saved by grace, but once you are, follow the rules. You don't get saved by following the rules. You get saved by grace. But after you're saved by grace, and if you are saved by grace, you will want to follow the rules. I've been preaching that for 37 years. When I began preaching this, it was not well known. That's how old I am. Not in my region. Not on TV. When I began preaching that, blind eyes opened. I saw blind eyes open. I had deaf ears pop open. People could not hear. They were deaf. Deaf ears popped open. I watched tumors disappear underneath my hand. I watched the lame walk, crippled up. I watched legs straighten out and lame people walk. I've seen demons come out of people. I've cast demons out of people. Aaron tells a story about this one demon we cast out, but he tells about the spider on the wall instead of the demon. <laughs> I remember speaking perfect Spanish without an interpreter, and at that time all I knew was taco, burrito, and donde esta baño? Where is the bathroom? I didn't have an interpreter, and I had a prophecy for this person, and I just started speaking to her. All of a sudden, tears comes down her eyes, and she understood everything I said. I don't know if the miracle was on her hearing or it was on my tongue, but communication happened. Why? To confirm the message I was preaching. Let me say it again. To confirm the message that I was preaching was from God. I've raised three people from the dead. My sister, one of them. So that's proof to some of you that was here. She was dead and then she came alive and then she worked in the ministry for a year after that. I raised a baby from the dead. Dead, in the hospital, flatline, dead. Chasing me out of the room. I said, no, the baby will live and not die. A man in a casket. Prayed for a man in a casket. He came back to life. Three people raised from the dead. I don't know if some of you know this or not, but what was the purpose of this? To authenticate my ministry and the message from God. Say that. To authenticate the ministry and the message from God. Prophecy. I remember, I'm telling you about the gifts. All I can tell you is I cannot deny that the gifts are for today because I personally have experienced them. I prophesied to a pastor in Canada that he would go on to be a national leader and his brother would pastor the church. They took me back in the room afterwards and said, we're sorry you missed that one. A year later, that's exactly what happened. That man was promoted to chief and his brother took over the, the church and started pastoring. I, uh, <laughs> I was just trying to think of just some illustrations. So, uh, so far, dead people have been raised, blind eyes, deaf ears, tumors, lame people walking, demons coming out. These are the power gifts. I left the care of this church with a guy one time. And then I told this man over here, when I left, I said, now, when the helps meeting starts, I want you to record this meeting, because I knew he was beating the sheep, and I wanted to get it on, on tape. And I 
told him, and he can confirm this. I said to him, when he says, turn the tape off, you tell him, I said, when you say, turn the tape off, I will not. And is that exactly what happened? That is exactly what happened. And I could hear on the tape, I said, shut the tape off. Now that's a pretty accurate prophecy, wouldn't you say? Yeah. To declare what the person would say. Let me try another one. Uh, you'll remember this. I was in Pennsylvania. And I, uh, I stood to the pulpit, started preaching, and everyone gasped. I picked up on the verse where the last guest speaker had ended. Then I proceeded to finish that teaching, and it had to do with pig and it being unclean to eat. They never had me back because they were pig farmers. But God gave me that as what? A sign to authenticate the message that I was preaching. I remember in Paraguay, prophesying to some people. I'm talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Are you with me? Yes, prophesying to some people. This one man comes and stands here. I'm going down the line prophesying to people. I get to this one man and I, I could feel like he was pretty, pretty stiff, you know? And so, and I'm working through an interpreter. I didn't have the gift of tongues at that service. And so I'm working through the interpreter, and I'm telling them he's prophesying, I'm prophesying, but he's interpreting for me. I get to this man, and I start saying, milk, uh, eggs. And, I mean, I just list a bunch of food things. And the man bursts into tears. And my interpreter, you know, Pedro was his name, he, he looks at me, he says, what do you mean milk? And I said, milk. Milk and eggs and bread, I don't know. I, I listed several things off. And the man burst into tears. Later he told me, I, I didn't know what the, and he fell on his knees and started crying. I thought, leaving that one alone, I don't know. Milk, eggs, and bread, maybe he doesn't like that stuff, I don't know. So I moved on. Later he came back to me and he says, I stood in line to prove you a false prophet. And he said, you read my grocery list that no one else knew. It's right here in my pocket. I st stopped at church on the way home. What's that for? To confirm the message that I was preaching. That's the only reason. It's the only reason. Not to exalt me. Not to edify me. It edified him. It ministered to him. It caused him to get saved. What are the gifts for? To authenticate the message. I don't know. There's other things. Praise God. Apostolic outlook three and a half years ago. I said God's drawing on the line. He's cutting on the line. He's separating pages. He's holding up the page. I mean, knows that was a long time ago to get to this point, but now do you see how that has actually happened? These are the gifts of the Spirit. What are they for? To confirm the message. What is the message? The gospel of the kingdom of God. That means Jesus didn't do away with the law. He came to give you an opportunity for all of your sins to be forgiven. And to become a baby, a newborn person into the kingdom of God and then learn to have a right relationship with your heavenly father. He opened the door for you. These, all these things have been to confirm that message. Recently, Robert Wagner had a word of knowledge. He got his back healed on the spot. I mean, this is just recent. Nate, when he first came in, I called out a thumb. Is that correct? I mean, thumb. What's that? It's called the gifts of the Spirit. Was it because God was so concerned about Nate's thumb? No, he wanted to confirm 
the message that I was preaching was from God. He's been here ever since. Because he knew, hey, God's in this. Am I making sense to you? My wife had nosebleeds. I called that out. She got healed. Gifts of healing. Melissa, is, is your heart still healed? Ran a marathon. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, that's, that's gifts of healing. That's not therapeo. That's not therapy. All of this, all of this, every, everybody hear exactly what I'm saying. All, all of this over my entire life has been for one reason and one reason alone is to confirm the message that we preach here and to authenticate that I really am an apostle. Now there's false apostles, false prophets. False prophets, their prophecies never come to pass, but man, they sound better than mine. Now, what you understand about me is I, I give opportunity for everybody to prove their ministry. That's what I do. I don't condemn. I just let them flow in what they believe is their ministry, and it's either going to be proven and backed by God, or it's not. Get on the bike, see if you can ride it. You can't ride it. Well, then I guess you're not a rider. Well, go ahead and prophesy. If it doesn't come to pass, we're going to stone you. No. That's what they did in the Old Testament. It doesn't take me too long to know when someone's just trying to draw attention to themselves or they're trying to help people. I hope you've been around long enough that I... I'm not here to draw attention to myself. I mean, I've been at this so long, it just doesn't really matter anymore. Amen. I'm here to help you. And if you need a sign, if you need a gift of the Spirit to help you. See, when I flow in word of knowledge, it's just to help you. Healing is already yours. But if I have a word of knowledge about it, and you come up here, that triggers your faith. Am I making sense to you? So, last verse, Acts 1.8, it's been prayed, it's been mentioned, it's been said, but let's, let's hear it with this teaching in mind. Did you get anything out of this teaching? Acts 1.8, but you, I'll prophesy it to you, but you shall receive Power. Can you be trusted with it? Well, if you've got rid of the carnality and the selfishness and the competition and the, and the pride and all that, you will, you will receive power, dunamis. It means authority, ability, able to do. He will give you the authority to do it. Think about it that way. He'll give you the right. He'll give you the authority to do that. After... I mean, you're not going to get it until after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I made a statement a couple of weeks ago. Jesus lived a holy, sinless life before he received the Spirit. He did it totally. It is written. It is written. It is written. The Holy Spirit is not to help you live right. The Word is to help you live right. Well, if I just had God's Spirit, I could do it. Well, that'd be God doing it for you, and that's not the point. Let the Word become life in your life. All right, you shall receive power, the authority, ability, the, the able to do. After that, the Holy Ghost. Holy. Holy is H-A-G-I-O-S. Sacred, pure, morally blameless, consecrated, innocent, modest. That doesn't sound like some of the spirits that people have today. Uh, I want to say that one more time. You see some of these guys on TV doing these crusades and one guy with the tattoos and calling Emma down and everything else. I don't, I don't see any modesty or innocence in that. 
I don't see any purity in that. Well, people are getting whacked. And, and why would God whack somebody? That's just not really good holy vocabulary. Come on up here and God's going to whack you. Well, come on down here and let me whack you. God, what are you talking about? Holy. Everybody say Holy Ghost. Yeah, holy is uh, sacred. It's sacred. You shall receive power after the sacred spirit comes upon you. People are way too unreverence to the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God comes, worship happens, reverence happens. An awe happens. I'll be standing over there before service and Spirit will divide to me a gift. It's a humbling. It's a reverence. It's a sacred thing. And when I receive a word of knowledge, I, I take it as sacred and holy. I don't want to abuse that. I want to use that rightly. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be, shall be is E-S-O-M-A-I, and it means will be, may have. also means exist. There's a reason for existence when the Spirit comes on you. <clears throat> Maybe some of you come into church and you say, I don't even know why I'm existing in this pew right now. Well, the Spirit of God comes on you, you'll know why you're existing. You'll know why you're there. Now there's a reason, there's a purpose. God wants to use you to bless somebody else, edify somebody else. What are we talking about here? We're talking about now concerning spiritual. And you shall be witnesses. It comes from the word martis or a martyr. A martyr is someone who gives their life. There's too many, quote, Pentecostal churches or charismatic churches or word, I don't know, word of faith doesn't even have too much spirit anymore. You know, they're kind of dead and dry. But Sorry if you're a word of faith. But have some faith and get the spirit. Um, there's just a lot of churches that doesn't have this martyr mindset. Are you willing to lay your life down? No, I want another million dollar offering so I can buy another million dollar house so I can fly around another million dollar plane. I'm sorry, stop the nonsense. Take an offering for an orphanage? Why don't you sell one of your million dollar homes? You could take care of that orphanage the rest of the, the time that the planet exists. I, I don't know. I'm, I want to help you understand what's holy, what's a witness, what's sacred. And what's just garbage? The world's waiting for the real, friends. Witness. Witness means uh, in a court of law. It's a legal judgment. Now, now, don't judge. I am so nauseated with that. Which means you, have this, you do not have the Spirit of God if you do not know how to judge. If you don't even know how to judge a diaper, stay out of church. Legal judgment also means proof or testimony. A witness means you have proof. You have a testimony. I've lived in divine health for 37 years. I have proof. People say healing is not for today. Well, it's way too late for me to, 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 to think about that. I've seen too much over the years. You can't convince me the gifts are not for today. Do all have all of them? People say, well, I got the Spirit of God, so I got all the gifts. That's not what the Bible says. I say it's not what the Bible says. You can have everything the Bible says you can have. When you start thinking you have everything... You're going to get into error. Well, I can prophesy. Really? Or, 
or you're just going to come up with something that you think based on observation that will probably happen? Are you just giving some predictions? No, prophecy comes to pass if it's really prophecy. Healing actually manifests if it's gifts of healing. Are you with me? Well, I prayed for him. I know, I know God healed him. Well, if they're still in the same condition, you, you need to check yourself and say you didn't have the gift of healing. Because gift of healing works. Let's try it one more time. Well, I prayed for him. I know God healed him. How do you know God healed him? Well, because his word says so. Well, I don't know. You prayed for him, but that doesn't mean you had the gifts of healing. I prayed for a million dollars yesterday. I didn't get it. Apparently God said no. Or not yet. But just because I prayed doesn't mean it's so. See, God's still alive and you're not him. Now concerning spiritual. How many wants the real that, that I talked about? Absolutely. I don't, I don't want the other stuff. You know, don't try to act like you got the Holy Ghost. Because, you know, now everybody's going to know. And you know what? When you do, you don't have to tell anybody. You know, when you have a real word of knowledge, you know, what, I called out something the other day. I, I looked around and I said, my God, there's ten people here. This is pretty specific. I mean, it's not like there's someone here on TV land with back pain. Okay, my God, that's going to happen. That doesn't mean it's a word of knowledge. But when you call out something, what was it? Uh, uh, fusion and, and uh, calcium and all. I mean, okay, ten people. I, I even looked around and I thought, doesn't look like anybody here fits that. Everybody seems to be moving quite well. But you know, when someone responds, that is amazing. That is sacred. That is holy. I want you to catch that heart tonight. I want you to catch that heart tonight. So when you ask God, that the Holy Ghost come upon you so that you can be a witness. I want you to make sure you receive it accurately, correctly, and you will be a witness. The greatest witness that's in need in this world today is someone care about their job and work hard at it. Let me try that one more time. Go to any store, go anywhere, and see if you can find somebody that cares about what they're doing and they work hard at it. That would be a witness. That would be a witness. That'd be somebody that's thankful they've got a job. That'd be somebody that's working to be a blessing to somebody else, giving of their life for somebody else. And yeah, you, you exchange that for money into return. You get paid for it. Hallelujah. But why do it for the money? Be a witness. Enjoy your job. Enjoy what you're doing. If you don't like it, find another job. Find something you enjoy doing. Okay, I didn't mean to preach this long. I got a phrase for you. Let the word become life in your life. It's got me this far, and it, it got me to a place one time where God said, I can trust you with my power. He, he still is trusting me with that. And every time I do not take it lightly, I count it as a holy, sacred thing. I believe God is preparing a people that has that same mindset. Are all apostles... No. Do all of you have to be prophets? No. Do all of you have to be teachers? No. Do you all have to speak in tongues? No. Well, what if I don't have the gifts of healing? Well, have the gift of cleaning. You see, there's no big eyes or little use in the kingdom of God. When we get done with all this, this is what Paul said. Some soul, some water, but get it. God is the one that gives the increase 
And he's going to get credit for all of it. When you really have the Spirit of God, you know you didn't do it. People have said, you're pretty cocky, pretty arrogant. No, I'm confident. I'm just confident that I heard from God and I'm doing what he's saying. That's all. I hope I helped you out. How many wants this Holy Ghost that Jesus said, I will send that promise of my Father? Let's all pray this in a, in a holy, uh, sacred way right now. Father, we come to you tonight as a people here. We, uh, we know that if we ask for bread, you wouldn't give us a stone. We know that if we ask for the Holy Spirit, that's exactly what you will give us. We realize tonight, Father, we're not asking for, for gifts. We're not asking for tongues or, or miracles. Or, we're, not, we're not asking for that. We're, we're asking for your spirit, your heart, your mind, your nature, your power, your, your glory to come upon us. Let your glory rise upon us that you may be seen. That we may have the ability to, to move in whatever gift you would divide to us. Whether it be tongues and interpretation, whether, whether it be prophecy, whether it be gifts of healing. That's irrelevant to us. What we know is that we need Sometimes, evidence and proof to authenticate the message that we're sharing with others. The believers don't need a sign, but you said the unbelievers need a sign. Father, we will preach the gospel. We will not compromise on the gospel. We will preach it with the best understanding and presentation and with illustrations that we possibly can. But when there's that glossy-eyed look on those faces, when, when that person is just trying to argue about it or stubborn about it, we realize tonight that we need your Holy Spirit to divide severally whatever gift that you would decide that would be the sign, the wonder, the miracle that would authenticate the message that we're endeavoring to preach to people. Our existence is for your name to be known in this city, this region, this state, this nation, and this world. This is our greatest joy, is that one more person would come to repentance. So we ask for your spirit. We ask for your spirit to come upon us. People may say, why are you asking, Bishop? Obviously, the Spirit has been on you. Yes, but what I'm trying to tell you is that there's only one man I know. And John saw him one day, and he said he saw the Spirit of God descending and remaining on him. I know when the Spirit comes upon me. I know when the Spirit moves upon me to flow in these gifts. And then I know when it's just not there. I don't walk in the gift of faith all day long. I don't walk in gifts of healing all day long. 
So I ask again, oh sure, your spirit dwells within me. I couldn't have gotten saved without your spirit touching me. But we're talking about the Holy Ghost coming upon us to distribute gifts into our lives for the purpose of authenticating our ministry and the message that we preach. We receive. Uh, we, we reach out and say thank you. We reach out and say thank you. Hmm. We have not because we ask not, but, but we ask according to your will tonight. Therefore, we believe that we receive. And we shall have this power. When you see fit to use us in it. I want everyone to just simply receive. Now, some churches would teach that unless you're jerking and shaking and speaking in tongues, you haven't received it. But that's not true. You receive it because you believe. You believe that you receive and you shall have. I believe we all receive tonight. I believe we all receive tonight. When you receive something, you should be polite. And if you're polite, you'll say what? Thank you. Now, God may have all wrapped it up for you. You may be like my wife and unwrap it before you get out in the parking lot. Well, don't I have to... No, no, you don't have to do anything other than believe. I'm a word of faith preacher, too. I'm a prosperity teacher, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm all those others, too, but it, it all comes from the gospel of the kingdom. This is good news. This is good news. And everybody said, so be it unto me according to your word. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 2 things, either worship or or the gifts. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe there's a prophetic word uh, or a, a couple of prophetic words for people tonight, but let's just, let's just sing for a moment and worship God for a moment. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hmm. History maker. Is it true today when people pray? Yeah. All right, let's worship for a moment and we'll 